In this video we're going to run through user-defined functions in Python, uh, what they are and how we can use them. So a user-defined function is basically a block of code that we can call back with a specific name and reuse. So this means that we don't have to repeat ourselves over and over again in our code if we're doing the same thing. Uh, it's really useful for doing things and getting around with extra testing and error handling and also to be able to split up our scripts into certain parts to maybe do some thing with one thing and then the same with the other parts. Okay, so on the screen at the moment, I've got a few basic functions written out. To start your function, it's always DEF, and this is to define the function. The second part is the name. Now this should always be descriptive so you know what this function does. So in this one, it's add two numbers together. To add two numbers together, we would need to have our two numbers and they are, in this example, X and Y. Uh, and then our function returns X plus Y. So if we look at what this actually does, it will call our function here with the name, open the brackets up, we have two, we have x and y, so we need to make sure we have our two numbers. In this case, I've got three and 41, don't know why. So if we print that out, you can see we get 44. Now this function returns the value of x plus y. So if we had no print statement, we would simply get no output. So you, this could be good or bad for you, depending on what you actually want your function to do. If we look at the second one that I have written out here, so in this one we can see that within our function we have our print statement. And what this will do is when we call this function it will print the number regardless. So if we do that right now we do add two numbers and then we do let's say uh, 11 and 11. Without having to do the print statement like we did before it's going to print it out. So you can see here there's two different ways. This one returns the value and this one prints the value and then returns from the function. It's very important you have a return at the end and you can define what comes out. So if we carry on and we look a bit further down, let's get rid of this, and get rid of this. Here's something maybe a bit more practical and a bit more uh, usable that you might understand. I'm not a massive fan of all the really, really basic um, sort of examples because it doesn't really put into use in your brain what you think you can do with it. So at the top of my script here, I'm calling request and beautiful soup. These, like, these, uh, these modules are used to get information from the web and pass them in HTML. I've got some web scraping videos on my channel as well. If you're interested in that, go and have a look at those. So this function here, this uses the request of beautiful soup to get the HTML data from a website. Now it's quite plausible to think that if we were writing a web scraper that we might want to visit various different URLs. So if we didn't have our function written out, we would have to every time write at least these two lines to get the information. But what we can do is we can write our own function that does that for us, and then we, all we have to do is call our get soup, and that will get us the information. So if we look at this, we've got define to define our function, we've called it get soup, which means something to us, and we're passing in a URL. And then within that, we're gonna do r is request.get the URL, and then the soup is the R text, and we're going to use the HTML parser. And then we are returning soup. Now that's really important because if we don't return the soup out of our function, we'll get nothing. So if we run this one, you'll see that we should print out all of the contents of HTML from google.co.uk. And you can see that all in the terminal there. We could then move on to a different function or do something else with that information. If we remove the soup from the return and we try and print something, we're going to get no output, none, because we didn't return anything back from our function. We could even return R, um, and that will return just the request here. See, we got response 200. But we don't want that. What we want to come out is the soup. Also, if we didn't print anything, we wouldn't print any data out because we don't have any print in our function. We don't have a print statement in here, and we run it. We get no errors, which means it's got that information, it's stored it in the variable when the program's ended. Okay, so hopefully that helps you uh, a little bit understand what to do with them, and I'm going to move on to another practical example now. In this example here, I've got a short script that I wrote to go out and get the Premier League table. Um, it runs through and scrapes all the information out and prints it out onto the screen, like so. Okay, so what if we wanted to do this but for different leagues? Say we wanted to get the championship table or League One or something like that. Well, we could copy and paste all of this and then 
do it all again and run it a few times, but that would be duplicating our code and we don't want to do that. So what we would do is we would write all of this into one function and call that with the different URLs to get the information out. Now in this, in this bit of code here we already have the print, so I'm going to leave that in and I'm just going to wrap this all in one function called getTable and then put the URL in, indent all of this so it's within the function, put that in the right place. Now if we run this we will get absolutely nothing because we haven't called our function. So to do that we simply do get table and now we need to pass in the URL that we put here. So if we run that we should get our table like we did before. So what this is doing here is that when we call this function get table and give it a URL it runs through this block of code for us and this prints out this. So we could quite simply change that and put in the URL for the championship table and there we go, we've got that out here at the bottom. We could do both and we could call both at the same time and go get table and then do Premier League table, print both of those out and you can see we've got a nice long list of all that information. So hopefully this has been useful and hopefully you get up to speed a bit more with uh, user defined functions in Python. Very, very well, very, very useful and definitely worth learning. Um, work out how you can sp split up your scripts into parts and then take that part and turn that into a function and then take another part and turn that into a function and you can build on each of those parts. When you've got your functions all written out, you can call them from different scripts. So we could have uh, this table, get table script, and we could call that into another program. Um, there's so many things you can do. It's definitely worth learning. If you've got any questions, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Cheers, guys. Bye.